Pull up a cup of coffee and let's get this party started. We're the uplines you didn't know you needed, but now you have. This is the podcast for women who are building a direct sales business, but want to do it the right way. Melanie has a decade of experience in direct sales. She's earned the top in industry four years in a row and has grown a multi-million dollar organization. She gives a no BS approach to leadership, recruitment, and organization. And my bestie Katie has you covered with the rest. From the relationships, the do's and don'ts of branding, her content has been viewed by millions. She doesn't just talk the talk, but she teaches people how to create an intentional brand too. All right, let's get this party started. Well, hey everyone, it is Katie and Melanie with another episode of the Direct Sales Done Right podcast. And this week we are talking about one of the most asked for topics mm-hmm. and that is spouse support. So yeah. I feel like I'm kind of here to like lead the conversation, but okay. I want to talk for just a second. Actually, I'm going to read the review of the week first. Okay. And then we're going to talk about sort of what happened behind the camera <laughs> a little bit as well, because we have a lot of experience with the idea of spouse support, 10, yeah. 11 years in the industry. You learn a thing or two, you see a thing or two when it comes to spouses and understanding direct sales. So before we dive into all of that, we need to hear hear from our review of the week, which is Mama Needs a Chill Pill. And she says, you always have an action item before we're done. Not only are Melanie and Katie your biggest cheerleaders, but they are rock star mentors as well. The podcast episodes are short and to the point, but always packed with useful information, tons of of inspiration, and most importantly, something you can implement right away to make an impact on your business. Listening to them, you feel like you're sitting with them, brainstorming together how you can show up for your best self, for your downline, your customers, and also your family. They don't sugarcoat anything, so you can relate when the struggle is real, but also celebrate the success you have. I wish I had this podcast when I first started my business, and I'm grateful I have it now. I'm building a with a better vision, plan, and intent, the time directs this time direct sales is fun. Thank you, ladies. Plus, we also have our listener of the week. And our listener of the week, this is kind of cool. They get a free, like mm-hmm. mini mentorship session. They show up in the inbox over on Instagram, and we actually they can ask us any question that yeah. they have about their business, and we will respond with our personal feedback, suggestion, tips, whatever it is that you need. So if you're wondering how you can become the listener of the week, it's super simple. Tag us on Instagram, let us know you're listening to the episode, share it to your stories, and that is it. If we pick you, we will send you a message over on Instagram. Actually, if you're listening, um, we will also send you a message on Instagram and Mm -hmm. let you know. But this week, it's Leanna. Leanna is actively, at actively, you are the winner of this week as the listener of the week. So we're diving in we today. Are. We Let's are going to talk um, spouse support. And we just had a funny conversation <laughs> with our amazing cameraman, John. We've been working with John for, oh, I don't know, five, five years. years. <laughs> I almost said three, but he's holding up a five behind the camera right now about just this idea of, of spouse support. And here's the deal. We're going to be very honest with you. Sometimes we feel like like husbands can get a bad rap for what they very likely don't understand mm-hmm. or that they don't adopt the vision that you have because it's not clearly communicated. So we're yep. going to be very honest with you, not just about Melanie's person ex- personal experience with a spouse support, but also a reflection for you to say, well, what am I doing on my part to allow my spouse to be more supportive? So Mm -hmm. the purpose of this episode is really to give you some insight into understanding how to better communicate with your spouse when it comes to your business. Yeah. And really at the foundation of all relationships is communication. You know, in order to have a healthy and thriving relationship, it really does mean that Both parties, husband and wife, the significant other are willing to have a healthy conversation. Even if you don't always agree with the other person, you respect respect their viewpoint. You try to find a way to make a middle ground. And so I've learned a lot of that over the years. But I want to be honest about the start because I'm pretty sure that my story is going to resonate with a lot of women out there. And you know what? There might be some of you that are like Katie. And her husband was incredibly supportive, you know, at the very beginning. He didn't understand it. Right, right. And he did struggle a little bit with like if I was working and he didn't know what I was doing or Nick Nick was crying and and he was like you know why are why am I the only one right now so 
I wasn't the best communicator, <laughs> but it was also something where, yes, he was a pretty incredibly yeah. supportive husband mm -hmm. um, from the get-go. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm going to share a little bit of my beginning and where I started to kind of set the stage, and then we're going to give you some great advice. So I started my business 11 years ago, so it's been a long time. Our kids were, were itty-bitty. They were little, six months old and two and a half. And, you know, Matt and I had this agreement, this spoken agreement, that even through the years that we were dating, got engaged, you know, planning our wedding, newlyweds, mm -hmm. that the whole goal was that I would be a stay-at-home mom eventually. That was what I wanted. I communicated that that was my desire. And Matt, being the good husband that he is, did everything in his power to line up so that I could stay home, right? So he took a better paying job so that we would have more income, even exactly. though it meant a little bit of like security of where we were at before. Mm -hmm. You know, I went from, he let me go from full-time down to part-time whenever we had Landon, who was our oldest. And then eventually I went from part-time to not working at all. Mm -hmm. And all throughout that, Matt was in the background going, okay, how do I make sure they have enough money in the savings? And okay, Melanie, you're not gonna be able to spend any additional money. If you wanna be a stay-at-home mom, we're not gonna be able to go on vacations. We're not gonna be able to, you know, spend random money. And that is really where yeah. the, he would used to text me and be like, what did you spend that was $12.53 yeah. at Target? And I would be so irritated that he was texting me right. about it. But in his mind, he's like, we are going to overdraft the account. Like, what are yeah. you doing? And so there was all of these transitions. He was really trying to line up that, okay, this is Melanie's dream and wish. I want to provide that for her. So now we fast forward to, I'm a stay-at-home mom. We made that dream our reality. I'm six months into being a stay-at-home mom and fully stay-at-home mom. And we, so Landon's two and a half, Bryce is, you know, six months old. And I go down this path of really improving my wellness because that's really where it started. Can I ask right? you a question about that time? Like, even though you were financially like struggling. Yeah. Did, were you satisfied as a stay-at-home mom? Like, mm -hmm. did you feel like that was your dream? Like, like you were living yeah. the dream? No. Okay. So, but I never wanted to admit it. Why? Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell Matt, like, I changed my mind. I felt guilty for it. I felt oh. shame and guilt around this is what I had wanted. This is what we worked so hard for. Because that's what you agreed on, right? Absolutely, okay. right? Yeah. So we'd agreed upon that. And then once I was in it, I was... I remember things like I would sit down to do crafts, but I hated that it was messy and they were making a mess. I like wanted to do it for them, right? So like little <laughs> things like that. I'm like, God, just let me do it, right? Where some moms are like, who cares? Make a mess. We'll clean it up later, you know? And in my mind, I thought, oh, we're going to be, you know, going on walks and going out to lunch and designer clothes. And I thought I would just like be this like Pinterest mom. And it was so far from the truth. And I just felt like every day was Groundhog Day. You know, I just sort of felt kind of lost, but I didn't know that until I was in it. Right. And then you add on top of that, I was just, you know, how our bodies yeah. are postpartum. You're just completely out of, you're trying to figure it all out. Right. So there was a lot of emotion that okay. was happening in that, that six months. And I can remember being, you should be so happy. This is what you prayed for. This is what you wanted. This is yeah. what you worked so hard for. Got it. And so there was like this huge sort of disconnect for me personally. And so whenever I started, I started with the product first. I'd gotten amazing results with the product and then I ventured into the business. But the whole time I was venturing into the business and at the first time I approached Matt, he said no. Right? So the first time I said, I'm, I think I'm going to sign up for this direct sales business. Like, I think I could be really good at it. No. It was a hard no. It wasn't even a, let's have a conversation about it. Tell me about this business. It was no. And in his mind, he was like, no, we can't afford that. We can't afford for you to pay that sign-up fee. We can't afford for those products every single month. Like we had $100 left in the bank account. The products were $120 a month and then your your monthly fees. And in his mind, he we didn't know, and we didn't. We didn't know anybody in direct sales. We didn't know anybody that was successful yeah. in it. It was kind of this concept that was, even just we come from blue collar families. Sure. Nobody in our family is entrepreneur, entre, you know, or CEOs, Penorial. entrepreneur. Yeah. Man, I couldn't get it right. So again, you have to look at all those factors. Like you have to look sure. at our upbringing to know kind of why he said no. And also in his mind, he's like, I made this plan. I saved for us so you could stay home. Why do you want to work? So his his response was, if you want to get a job, we'll put the kids in daycare and you can get a real job because okay. that's what in his mind was a real job. 
Got it. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at, right? But I went against his better judgment and I took money that I got for my birthday and I signed up. And in the back of my mind, I was like, I will prove you wrong. Like, I will actually make this business a success. And I did. I got to work right away. And, you know, the thing that as I look back now, and I was working really hard. And one of the things about direct sales is you put in a lot of time and energy at the beginning for a little bit of money. And that actually is the same with all businesses. When you start a new business, you're working a lot and you're getting paid like one cent an hour, right? Yeah. But then as you start to build your clientele, as you start to build your business, the, the faucet turns on, you start making more money per hour. And then eventually... If you have a good successful business and you're consistent long enough, you'll start making more money. Okay. So I was in that beginning phase where there wasn't a lot coming in, but I was putting a lot out. And so there was this building tension. Mm. I don't know why you want to work. You're supposed to be cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids yeah. and the house is a mess and there's dishes in the sink and you're always on your computer and I don't know what you're doing. So there was like this building resentment right. that was starting to happen. But was your mindset already, and I think this is a struggle for many people, You did you have this mindset of, I am going to be the best of the best, I am going to the top from the beginning? Mm -hmm. or, was it, or was it more that you were just like, I'm trying to prove to him that I can yeah. do this? Like, what was your motivation? Was it external? Was yeah. it internal? Was it a little bit of both? Um, it was both. I was going to be the best of the best because I'm that is my personality. Anything sure. that I put my mind to that I really want, I, I will do it until I get there, right? I'm not, I'm not, don't quit easy unless it's something I'm like, I don't really want this. You like know? cycling. Correct. <laughs> like <Okay>. cycling. <laughs> I, and I have no problem saying that this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I was day one, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it all the way to the top. I'm going to be the most successful, you know, and I'm going to crush all the leaderboards, right? So I was from day one, okay. I was going to go all in with it. Again, when you look back, there was a disconnect in that communication. I did not because I felt uncomfortable going to Matt and saying, hey, I want to work. Okay. What I wanted to do before as a stay-at-home mom, I no longer want to do. I kind of want to do it. I want to have the best of both worlds, but I really want to work. And so I didn't want to have that conversation. So I just tiptoed around it for a very long time. And I tried to do both. So I did things like, as Matt pulled into the garage, shoved everything in the pantry, started banging the pots and pans like I was cooking dinner. Clearly he knew I wasn't cooking dinner, right? So like I started to do all, I tried to hide what I really wanted. Okay. So that tension just kept building and building until eventually. And he knew you were kind of being dishonest about it. Like what? Well, I don't know. Like we should ask him that. Yeah. That I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if he knew that. He just, in his mind, he didn't understand why I wanted to work so hard when he was over here trying to provide for our yeah, family. And working so yeah. hard. Yeah, and you think about it. So the other thing is he was working so hard, working long days, and then he was coming home and I'm like, take the kids, I gotta go do this work. And he was like, hold on, I need a moment to chill. Right. I need to decompress. I have, He had a high stress job. So there was all these factors. Yeah. I mean, I kind of threw our whole life upside down. And then I think sometimes uh, we as women go, I don't understand why you don't support me. But you got to yeah. sometimes look through their lens. Like, what's actually changing right. in their world right now, you know? Were you good about looking through his lens then? Or is this something that has taken you time to actually see mm. it from his perspective? Because you it told has. this story, like, I I've heard a it billion so, a billion times. times. Yeah. So would you say it's something that you recognized immediately? Mm -hmm. Or was it something that it actually took you time to kind yeah. of take a step back and see it from his perspective? I didn't. I didn't recognize it immediately. I was more on the lines of, I don't understand why you can't just support me. I don't, why don't you get okay. it? Why don't you see how amazing this opportunity is? Right. And I, so I did a couple of things right in the beginning and I did a lot of things wrong too. So I, I tried not to force it on Matt. Mm -hmm. I didn't force the products. I didn't force him to like the business, but I tried to include him in it. But we had sort of this blow up. That's really where everything kind of came to a head was it was, I was about nine months in and we were at a public event for the business and Matt just lost his crap. And that was really the night where he gave me that ultimatum. Yeah. You know, you either choose the business or it's me and the family. Yeah. And I, that was the moment, and I remember that conversation. And we know we yelled, we screamed, and then we talked for, and our kids were at, staying at our parents' house that night. So they weren't even home, but we got to the point where it was like, I don't want to make you quit, is what Matt said. But this isn't working for our family. And it was at that point where I said, I love my business, but I won't keep doing it if, if it's going to ruin our relationship. So we had this agreement. Yeah. 
And then we started to devise a plan. It didn't mean that the next day things got better. It was still hard even right. from that point forward. But I did some things after we had that discussion. Mm -hmm. So if I could tell the person listening right now that's going through any any kind of that, it is have the difficult conversation. If this is something you want, tell them why. Tell your significant other why it matters to you. How what you what you need from them. How you're gonna sure. you know you just that that communication is key and again being okay if they don't see it at first right you know right and then there's work on your end that needs to be done not just in communication but i i don't know about your husband but my yeah. husband is very a bottom line thinker so yeah. yeah for me it also came down to i need to show him the expectation of what this can be but i sure. also need to be upfront about the the amount of time it's going to take and this goes back to prior episodes we've talked about where you really have to be focused on the income producing activities that are yeah. going to build your business we can't just be on social media kind yeah. scrolling, posting a picture here and there, you want to carry yourself as a business professional, even if you are looking to do what I did at first, which was get the groceries paid for, which yeah. was a great goal for our family. And, yes. and that's what I saw as the vision for our uh -huh. family at the time. But I had to make that a reality too. Mm -hmm. And I had to show him how the work aligned to the actual end result yeah. as well. All right. All so right. let's go over some ways that people listening, our friends here at the Direct Sales Done Right podcast can actually begin to better see mm -hmm. or communicate. I would say communicate with their spouse, their sure. goals. Okay. So number one is communication, top of mind. Just do a quick pause and say, have I honestly communicated why I'm doing this business? Have I really sat down and said, this is why my why I've chosen to go this path? You know, and really looking at your track record in the past. Are you somebody that starts a new business every single month? Are you somebody that quits a new business every single month? If you don't have a trustworthy track record, yeah. it, your spouse is going to give you a pushback because they're seeing more money go out than they are seeing come back in. So you need to communicate why you're starting this business, what you want to get out of it, and then you actually need to be accountable to that. Because just like anything that we do, if we say, oh, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, and every month we keep saying we're going to lose 10 pounds, our friends stop believing us. They start rolling their eyes when you talk about this next diet you're doing. So it's the same thing in your business. If you are going to make $500 in your direct sales business, then make $500. That will take a marble and put it in your trust jar. Yeah. And it may not change everything in that first month, but your spouse may go, oh, wow, we just made, and then tell them, we made $500, right? Minus our product that we purchased, you know, and then even maybe apply that. What do we want to apply that to? Start an account where that money can go and you can, your spouse can see that. So I think that's important is, you know, to be good on your word because nothing erodes trust faster than not being good on your word. Okay. All right. Next, you have to make sure that you're creating a schedule. So I, this is really why time blocking has become something that is so near and dear to my heart because it was that night that we actually sat down and mm -hmm. started making our, our calendars yeah. for the week. And it would be a Sunday conversation. And at that time he worked full time. And I, so we would sync our Google calendars to one another. Yeah. So I would write in, these were going to be my business hours for the week. These were the nights that I was hosting team calls in the evenings, you know, and then we would put things in there like date night on Thursday night, even if we don't leave the house and we just sit on the couch and watch TV, we knew when we were spending quality time together. Because prior to that, he right. would be irritated because I'd be on my computer. But in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, we have, we're going to spend Thursday, Friday, and Saturday hanging out. I won't be working. But in his mind, it's Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, right? So yeah. resentment, because there was no communication of this is when it's our time. This is when I'm working. This sure. is when it's family time. So I started to communicate more when I was working, um, when I was spending time with family. And then we started to do things like Matt started cooking dinner on certain nights of the week and I started cooking dinner. So we started to have more of a yeah. conversation about how we could share the responsibilities. I mean, obviously as success grew and he started to see more of that. So we communicated instead of Matt walking through the door and me shoving the kids at him and running to do a call, it was he could decompress on the way home. He was ready to go when he walked through the door. And everybody was yeah. happy. It was just a simple tweak in communication. And it wasn't that he didn't want to hang out with his own kids. It was just yeah. he had in his mind he needed to decompress. And I had something else in mind. And there's a book, Brendan Burchard's, um, 
oh gosh, I forget the title of the High book. Performance Habits? I, yep. Okay. He talks about that decompression time, which I think a lot of times when people don't work or, or they, they are just working their business full time and their spouses are working full time, there mm -hmm. is this need to decompress before they get home yes. that we also have to respect. Mm -hmm. I also want to add one more thing to when Melanie was talking about your work schedule. And this is still something with Mike I communicate with. Even last night, I called him on my way home and I was like, babe, do you mind? I'll take Nick to the orthodontist, but can you actually handle dinner tonight? Because I actually do have to go back into the office. I wasn't planning on it. I apologize. Do you mind doing dinner? Sure. It's fine. Just simple yeah. communication just to let them know you don't always have it nailed, but you're really trying. And then the other part of that I would add is hard boundaries. Mm -hmm. You should love your spouse more than you love your work. Yeah. You should love your spouse more than you love your work. And if you find yourself in the, at the position where all you are thinking about is work, you can't turn it off ever, and your spouse is on the couch waiting for date night and you just can't get off your phone, you just like really want to close the sale or you like can't wait to talk to that one person who really wants to sign up with your team, that's incredibly disrespectful to your spouse. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to kind of put that plug is you you need to love your spouse more than you love your work. Yeah. And it just means you have to be smarter about your boundaries. It's not like you have to choose your spouse or your business. Yeah. But you just have to plan for it. So it might be as simple as saying, all right, tonight's date night. I'm going to give my like 30 minutes before date night starts, you know, on my calendar, I wrap up the night. Yeah. And then I put my phone on airplane mode and I just choose to say, I'll get to yeah. it later. I mean, just being aware of your time and how you're spending your time and not right. getting lost in it. It's just, <laughs> it's a simple thing. You can have both options. You just, you have to manage the boundary, mm -hmm. right? You got to respect it because you're so right. If It's like me sitting at the table answering a message. You're basically saying, yeah. Yeah, your our conversation isn't important, but this person is right. Right, exactly. Me, even now, I, this is something we talk about all the time. We notice when people are like on their phones. Um, okay, two more things, and then we're we're done. So get your spouse involved. This was something I started to do. It was again a little painful at the beginning, but it was really worth it. So, you know, I took Matt to conferences instead of me going alone, because then it just created more separation. Yeah. What's Melanie doing? I took him. And while we were there at the conferences, I introduced him to other spouses that I knew from the other wives that we were doing business with or vice versa. And so what happened is the guys started to, to develop friendships. Yeah. And so then they started to understand what this business was about and how it was a little non-traditional. And a lot of them came from the same sure. background. But also Matt sitting in some of the sessions and listening to the CEO and, and speakers made him understand, oh, yes, this direct sales business is very much like a corporation and the way a CEO would talk. And he saw the vision and Matt's a businessman. So he understood, you know, what our CEO was saying. And so that helped yes. Matt get behind the business and realize that it was a real business. And... That was really important because through that process, Matt recognized the need for spouses to have that support. And he really yeah. did that. Like, do you remember Dave saying, like, Tasia, one of our one of the our team members was like, I just showed up at Melanie's house and dropped Dave off and left. Remember, we went to that event. All oh the husbands gosh. were there. He didn't yeah. know Matt at all, but now they're best friends. Yeah. You know? And I will say, I will give this disclaimer. My husband is very shy. Very yeah. shy. So the first time I took him to an event and I was... I I was pretty bubbly. I yeah. was like talking to everybody. I was like, my was team was growing. Yeah. He was standing <laughs> in the corner, shell shocked, like completely shell shocked. And so I remember afterwards, he really needed to decompress from it. Yeah. Not that he didn't enjoy it because he did enjoy seeing me sort of like thriving and he, he saw that side of it, but it's okay if it's not your husband's thing either. Yeah. Like there's yeah. other ways you can involve him in your business mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily equate to having to be like around yeah. people either. Yeah. So I just want yeah. to kind of mention that too. Yeah. And what, and this great suggestion for that is, you know, I used to say to Matt, Hey, you're really good at you know, building spreadsheets. I really want to track my income progression. Could you do that for me? Or how would you handle this situation? Right? So I would actually involve him in sure. some of the things I knew he was good at, you know? So if it's business or it's relationships or it's communication, like ask them, get them involved, yeah. let them be a part of that. So whatever that may be, but I just, I know for Matt, he's such a social person. That was perfect. He actually took that on as sort of his responsibility to make sure spouses felt welcome in the environment that, that we were in. Okay. Um, okay. 
So I just want to wrap it up with this is you at the end of the day, if you want your, your significant other to be on board with what you're doing, you have to show them the money. And you already said this, but I want to drive this home. If you want them to support you in anything that you're doing, you can't just be playing on your computer and doing these Instagram reels and putting up TikToks. You have got to make sales. And if you want them to support you and give you that investment of picking up that, that slack in terms of what you were doing to what you're not now, you have to work. You have to make money. You have to close the sales. You've got to build the business side of it. At the end of the day, that's what improves your life. And that's why you're doing direct sales in the first place is because you want your life to improve in some way. Yeah. So you got to be good on your word. If you say you're going to do it, you know, you got to do it. Even if it's not in the exact time frame you said, but you've got to show that you are willing to put in the work and you're willing to do the business and, you know, you're just not on to the next. And I feel like that has been, important was me really saying like this is sustainable yeah look here here it is I'm working really hard and and that has allowed us to right that has allowed us to have a better relationship it's allowed us to have conversations with our kids about what hard work looks like what success you know can look like I look back at this whole thing and I'm so grateful we navigated through that super difficult time because it's made us who we are today. I love it. I love it. Well, let's end with a truth bomb of the week. And I don't know about you, but I feel like the truth bomb is simple. Communication. Yeah. Communicate yeah. with your spouse. Just open communication and own your role in communication too. So let's yeah. also end with some client love. We have Christy Lyons who said, thanks to having recruiting systems in place. This has been my best month ever and I am so excited for my team. I am recruiting better than ever. And this is um, Christy Lyons who was in the Rockstar Recruitment Course. That's so awesome. you guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week as we talked about spouse support. We'll see you next time on the Direct Sales Done Right podcast. All right, so if you loved today's episode, make sure you head over to wherever you listen to the episode today and leave us a rating and review. And also take a little screenshot and tag us on Chic Influencer. We'll feature you in our stories. Plus, we'd love to get your feedback and hear from our listeners. Yes. Until next week, let's make Chic happen. <laughs>